the North Coastal Art Gallery, and I'm very, very excited to be able to present my good friend and wonderful art teacher, Denise Cerro, who is going to give us a, a demo that will include several things. First, her foolproof method for laying down papers for collage, and then uh, some, I think some stenciling work. And I'll, I'll add a little stenciling in, a couple little tricks that I use and kind of get a layout and a good start on a painting. I won't be finishing it, but I'll get a good start on it here. Okay, so not to keep you too long in anticipating, waiting to see what beautiful outcomes are possible for you too, if you follow some of her methods and use them as a starting point for your own creative pursuits. So uh, take it away, Denise. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna come down to the table. Okay, so here we are. I've got to start on one of my pieces, and this is just my first process of laying down papers. Um, I'm gonna come back to this, but first I wanna give you um, a little sampling of what I do to lay down my papers. First, I start out with a stack of everything. I save ledger sheets, old music, I've got fabric here. My very favorite things are tissue papers. My favorite thing in the world is dressmaker patterns. Old letters, sometimes they're fun to read while you're, you're working away. And I, I like to start out with things that are a little bit more on the neutral side because that gives me more freedom when I start to actually lay down paints and other papers. So let me give you a little sampling of some of the tricks of doing this. And I'm going to be working facing me. Hopefully we'll be moving the, the uh, video when it's done so that you can see what I'm doing and not have to look upside down. And what I've been using to lay down my papers most um, most people would use a medium, a paint medium for acrylic paints. And I've started using polyacrylic. It's a really great medium. It lays down papers really nice. It's very, very inexpensive in, uh, in comparison to some of the paint mediums. So I kind of have just gotten in the groove of using this. And I actually think I might try to do this because it's not really that important how you lay your papers out. I'm gonna do this upside down for me, right side up for you. And I just put on a slathering of the, the polyacrylic, lay my papers down. Um, these old ledger papers are really great because the ink on them tends to bleed mm. and does Add some really nice That's really colors. Fun looking, yeah. Isn't that great? That yeah. turquoise. I love that. Now the trick is, if you walk away from this, you're going to and, oh, and look how great that is. <laughs> it even imprints on the other side. You cannot walk away from this because now that the paper is wet, it's going to start to buckle. So I use a bowl scraper. It's a silicone silicone uh, bowl scraper. It has a beveled edge that's really squishy. Where can you buy that? You can get these on Amazon. Okay. And they're, they're like 6 or $7. And mm -hmm. they're really great. And paint cleans right off of them. But I use this to really work all of the bubbles out of my papers. And you can see the paint coming off on, on this. Some papers are sturdy enough that when you see a bubble, you can pull it back up. Others may not be, but even if you tear them, this is just your first layer. And it's kind of good that this is turning blue because you can see how much medium you can save that you've laid down and now you have it for something else. You're not wasting it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of pushing that around. Let's see what else we have. Um, I never get um, shoes or shopping bags that I don't save the papers. And again, I'm not really too particular with where these are going because I have no real plan with this. I like the plan to show up as a surprise. Uh, once I start to get in and actually find a composition, 
tissue papers you don't have to lay down so much because they they're pretty thin and they're just gonna stick stick where you put them And again, I really like working with the neutrals. A little bit more of this. And as I'm going, not only am I putting the polyacrylic underneath as my glue, I'm also putting it on top of the papers because it kind of will protect the papers with whatever I put down on top of it. So um, I see that this is a satin finish. Yes. Now um, you can use any finish or does it make it harder for the paint to accept on this finish? Or? Well, it really doesn't. Um, the difference, different uh, finishes you might want to consider are, for instance, if you use a flat finish, the flat finish has more of a white in it. So you can make your, if you use too much of it, your papers will get really foggy looking. Mm -hmm. It's the glaze, the gloss that has less of that in it. And if you want a really clear, you know, crispy, clear um, top coat over it, you would use a glaze. Okay. But, you know, the shinier they get, the little trickier it is to get papers to lay down on top of it. Um, but all you need to do is hit it really quick with some really lightweight sandpaper. Yeah. Or, or something like a corrugated cardboard, do you still use this? Um, you still would need to um, rough up the surface. All right. Yeah. So it wouldn't matter what you're putting on, on it, uh, what's important is what is underneath it because foundation, foundation, foundation needs everything. <laughs> right. And, and at this point, you just kind of are deciding. Now this, this is a thicker paper, so sometimes with the thicker papers, it helps if you just kind of dip them in water for a minute, soften them up. Oh, that's a good idea. And then lay it down so you're not fighting so much to get your paper to lay down smoothly. Mm. And again, you're going to want to come back with that one and squeeze out all the extra. Let's see what else we've got here. This is canvas, but it seems to me that it would be easier to work on a board, too. It's really easy to work on a board, but it actually is easy to, it's just as easy to work on a canvas. It just depends on what you want to do with your artwork. I like boards because when you get into sanding and scraping and mark making, boards are just a lot nicer and more durable than a canvas. Right. And I have had uh, times where I've put my, put something right through a canvas while I was mark oh, no. making, so. <laughs> but you know, it can all be fixed. Yeah. This is a, a letter from a stash of old things I got out of my neighbor's house. <laughs> so I always look, the best papers I find are um, like, this is old office onion paper. Yeah. Um, the, you can get, you can find these online. I'm gonna put that upside down. You can find, you know, people who, who uh, sell ephemera and old papers, you can find that. But you know, a great source I find is thrift stores. When you go into a thrift store, hit their stationery department mm -hmm. or their book department, because I have some of my best papers I've found there. So that's kind of what I do. I go over the whole darn thing and cover every bit of it. I'm use the rest of this. Now, if you do end up having, um, you know, like I see a little buckle happening here, if you can catch it early enough, you can pull your paper up or not. That one's gonna come up. Um, I like to think of it as babysitting. When you lay down this paper, you gotta make sure to babysit <laughs> this one because chances are it's gonna come up when you're not looking, when you least expect it.
this is just an all a piece of copy paper that I put in and did some coffee staining on it and laid bubble wrap on it. So it had I don't know if you can see the little the little spots in there. Um, I try to keep my straight edges on the edges so that I don't have a lot of line straight edges within my piece that I have to fight with. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, you, you said earlier when we were chatting that you took all different papers in a big bucket and just kept kind of layering them between each other and pouring on the coffee? Yes. How long did you leave it to soak? And, oh, I left know, it for a day or two. And, yeah. I left it for a day or two. I wasn't in any, any big hurry. You have to make sure your coffee and the tea, and, and, and what we're talking about is this paper. I took a bin and I laid papers and then bubble wrap and papers and some cloth doilies, things that would give texture. And once I got them all laid in the bin, I poured in co a very, very strong, I'm sure nobody could drink it, coffee and tea mixture, and just let it sit for a couple of days. And it's kind of like eco printing or eco dyeing your papers. Mm -hmm. um, it just came out really with these nice, subtle. I can see it's pretty. Yeah, the ones that I have that had the uh, doilies on it are really beautiful. So let's see what else I have. I know I also will add, I thought I had a piece of fabric in here. Well, I did, but I'm not seeing it now. I have a little piece there. This is what happens when you're so organized when you show up. <laughs> you, you get out of sorts. Let me put, we've all loved to have sheet music. And and you you can just start layering right over what you've already got happening. Oh, here's another thing that adds you know, you want to add things in that are going to show up and add some fun texture for you to play with. Again, that one might need to be soaked in a little bit of water. And let's put him right there. So if I end up painting over him, um, I'll be able to pick up the edges on this. Maybe I'll just flip him over because he's wanting to bend that way anyway. Um, you'll have some nice texture show up with that. So there you go. That's kind of my start. And I make sure to go over everything nice. I can save all of the extra medium that I have. And uh, another thing about using the um, polyurethane for the polyacrylic for this is it's a really nice hard finish. It dries really, really durable, really nice if that's important in your artwork. The downside of it is it's a little hard if you want to remove things. Um, you can oftentimes remove uh, things you don't want with alcohol. Um, it's a little tougher for the alcohol to work through this. But all in all, I really love it. Okay, so now we took this outside and let it dry up a little bit. So now, once I've got my neutral papers down, um, I, I kind of go in and I just add some color. Now, still don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I'm, I'm gonna guess. If I had to make a guess, I'm probably gonna do a floral in a pot. And so this might be the start of a pot. And again, I'm just using the polyacrylic and laying that down and making sure I've got all the air bubbles out. And if you work from the, the middle and go out, you, you pretty much will get all of them. I like to use transparent papers because you can still see what's going on in there. I also, have some papers that I printed myself with a jelly plate. Um, for those who are familiar with the jelly plate, it's it's uh, kind of mono printing, just making papers, um, not necessarily mono in color, 
but you can get all of this in pretty much one, one print. So I'm just adding some things on here that might lend themselves to a flower. And um, when I say flowers, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. I don't do a tr typically traditional flowers. If you can see here, most of my flowers are papers that are laid down. Um, and then once I've got everything laid down, I kind of, I section things off in my mind and um, I paint the sections because uh, I really like that addition in my work. So my florals are much more abstract. Some of them are papers, some of them are just drawn on. Um, it's a little bit of everything. Here, take it. Thank you. So now this paper's starting to wrinkle, so I've got to go back in there and babysit it and make sure that I'm gonna be, this is the piece of fabric I was looking for earlier. I found it and laid that in. So now I just want to add a little color. Now, as messy as this little guy looks, this is one of my favorite things to add. It's um, a paper napkin. And they're usually three ply, so you have to work to get that top ply off. And even though, and even this I can use for something else later on, but now I've got this really sheer piece of paper, and even though it's got some paint stains on it, I think that's gonna work for me somehow. I'm gonna lay it right here. Now, when you're working with the tissue paper like this, you have to be very careful. I always recommend putting this on last so it doesn't get a lot of um, handling. But look how lovely that just lays down and everything that's underneath it, you can see. It just is very transparent and it adds a really great um, painted line. This particular, I wish I had more of this. This particular napkin is really wonderful because it looks hand painted to begin with. So when you lay it down, it just adds to that. So that is, um, kind of where I'm going with this. It's gonna be some kind of floral. Again, I'm still just ripping papers up and adding them on and somehow they will magically work. Um, I do think things out as far as my, my elements that I'm going to use, but once I get into the actual painting, it's um, much more intuitive. I just lay things out and I like to find the painting within that. So. That being said, whoops, that's why you don't overwork the, the mm -hmm. napkins, but look how nice that is, it just tears off. At least it came off in an hour. Comes off <laughs> easy. So, <laughs> that, so that's a good start to a painting. And now I wanna show you, demonstrate to you how I find a painting um, in that. And I'm gonna flip this camera around uh, later when, when we put this on so that I'm looking at it to find what I want to see. Um, and, and oftentimes it takes turning it several times. Um, again, these, these papers were just randomly laid on there, but this was the direction orientation I thought would work. And I take my very favorite tool, and this is a Stabilo pencil. And it is a black paper, glass, plastic, and metal. It's a water-soluble, it's much better than a watercolor pencil because it's a really soft pencil. Um, this one's very pointy, but I'm gonna use it anyway. I also like that it's a fine line. So I just kind of go on, this is gonna be my vase. Here's my tabletop, here's my vase. I've got this flower, this is obviously gonna be flowers. But at this point, I also go and I draw my dividing lines and I'm not really neat and tidy about it. I kind of find like there's a natural line and I twist and turn my pencil as I go because it gives me more of an irregular line. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna make this work. I think I'm gonna make this be a stem and maybe this be a stem. And the only reason that I'm marking these is I wanna create my stems by painting the negative space around them. So, questions? 
Well, um, as you're using that Stabilo pencil, I remember once, do you ever wet it and let it bleed a little or anything? I totally do. I, I haven't done it yet. That's let the last, me... last sort of thing you do? or uh, That's one of the last things I do, but this is the beautiful thing about a Stabilo pencil is I can go back in now and I can get a really nice watercolory line happening. Depending on how much paint, I could put a lot of paint on it. I can even get them to drip. Now you can still block this off if you don't like it, right? Yes. I can totally do that. If I don't but like this. But once you put your poly... Um, once I put the polyacrylic on it, it's permanent. Yeah. So here's my... And, and I don't want them to be straight, perfect little lines. I want there to be breaks in them. Mm -hmm. Especially on the vase. Because um, this kind of gives me a roadmap of where I'm going. Yeah. And with the style of painting that I do, I do love negative painting. So I will go in. Oh, that's fun. Look at that paint you're using. <laughs> oh, and yes. <laughs> I, aside from using polyacrylic from Home Depot, whenever I go to the hardware store, I look for their oops paint, their mistake paint. And I always buy the light shades, the whites, the creams, because uh, I love how creamy it is and the way it goes on. I don't necessarily buy colors because I don't trust the color fastness of them, but I'm not too worried about um, the light colors and chances are I'm probably gonna go over this anyway with another color. So this is the hardest part of a painting, is figuring out what you're going to get rid of. So for this, I want a negative paint and I wanna create my, instead of painting stems on, I want to create stems by painting around them and let them kind of show up on their own, if that makes sense. Now this color is pretty light um, for going around these flowers, but this is just my, the color that I'm using, the base that I'm using to kind of just figure out where everything's going to go. And I don't paint over all of it. Like, that's kind of fun right there, what's happening. Um, I might want to keep that little leaf. Definitely want to keep these garden tools. <laughs> I'm not ready to give them up yet. So this is the point where you're trying to figure, you're, you're sketching on your painting, really. I don't really care about that little flower. So here's one of my lines. I will paint up to the line because I like the effect of that. These little guys there are pretty cute, those little flowers. <laughs> so they, they get to stay for the first go around. We don't know if they'll end up making it all the way the final to the cut. end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it's very helpful if you stay loose and um, don't get too wound up about where it's going because it's just paint mm -hmm. and you've got a lot you can do. So um, the, what you're painting next to now looks like it was actually painted on quite a while ago. Uh, oh, that, this right here, is this yes. An canvas this was a part it? of another painting. Those, oh, so those are my over. best things to work on are things, let me go to another color so here. So you're working over an old canvas. Old canvases are the best to work on because they've already got your underpainting. Yeah. Um, it's already worked out for you and you don't have to figure out an underpainting because there it is. Now I'm just switching to another color here. Oops. Um, because mainly I love this green. That's a great color. This yeah. is another one of those oops paints. Greens, it's really pretty. And, and even over here, this first color that I put in, it could, I might go over it four or five times. 
with different colors and build up color because I love I love the history. I love it when you just keep adding things and it gets better and better and then it gets worse and worse and then it gets better and better and you're constantly going back and forth. It's that dance of, of going back and forth until you get a painting that you want, that you're feeling good about. This is part of an old uh, shopping bag for free people. I've used yeah, it like several that. times. And um, so I don't want to lose that those words yet. <laughs> and this is very meditative. It's really relaxing. Yeah, it seems like it. That's such a great color. I would go out and buy that. I know it is a really pretty color, isn't it? And it only costs what fifty cents. It costs fifty cents. <laughs> can't the beat big it. five point five zero. I can't beat it. Now I will probably go in and make some kind of marks or add paint onto my flowers. Mm -hmm. But right now I just want to know where my flowers are going to be. So this is where you're thinking with your compositional head. Yes, yes, totally. And, and it's where you you have to you're The only dis real decision you're making right now, mm -hmm. maybe not the only one, but an important one, is what gets to stay and what goes. And you're constantly thinking about that. And it's a very hard choice because you pretty much love all those papers you just laid down. And if I don't want them... Well, I remember a while back we were talking together about the, um, the loud conversation and the soft conversation. Yes. And um, I, think, yes. I think our members would love to hear a little bit of that dialogue again from you. Uh, okay. About what that all means and uh, is yes. this part of what you're doing here? I'm trying to decide what's going to be your... It will be, major. that is something that is ongoing as you're working on a piece. And, and many people have heard uh, the concept of the loud conversation and the quiet conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's all about everything cannot be important. So once you find your, the, the subject matter, your focal point, that is your loud conversation. That is the thing that is going to draw people in. That you spend time on and you get it right. Once you've got that right, all this little stuff that you do over here, mm -hmm. this little background stuff that is not, you know, not contrasting, not hitting you in the face, this becomes your quiet conversation. And you can play here. This is a really good place to play because it's not the focal. It's not the important thing. It's just a place where you can play. But it contributes. It definitely, definitely contributes. contributes. It's, it's the, the support. Eye. Yeah. Not everybody can be the star. You still need some of the yes. co-stars. Yeah. Yeah. Bit players. So I don't, I don't want to lose all of this. Well, that must be the hardest thing. If you see something that you really kind of love, I know it is for me. You find something that you thought you did well or you really like the serendipitously the way it showed up. Uh -huh. But darn it, it's just not working with the main scheme. Yeah. And you hate to you hate to you mix hate to it give out, it up. You, know? yes. yeah. you do hate to give it up, but you have to remember it's for a better painting. Right. It makes for a better painting. Right. If you try to have too many things in, um and like I said, this is my first go around. I might go and get rid of these little garden tools. It might not work when I'm done. Right now, I like it, so it gets to stay. Um, so that's how I get started. And um, so I may leave this pot just exactly like it is. Uh, it, it, and that will become more important depending on how I uh, treat the background, treat, treat the quiet conversation. If I can keep that knocked back and soft and still add some little things in it, uh, maybe it might be with color. Um, I know one thing I did want to do that um, we were going to try a stencil. 
Right, because you've accomplished stencil. a lot just with the laying down of papers, using the Stabilo pencil, yes. and then coming back and working on your composition. But where does the use of some texture paste or a relief stencil come into play with mixed media? Okay, it comes into play all the time with mine. I'm gonna switch back to the other painting. Okay. okay. It may not be completely dry. It's a good thing I brought two pieces to play with. <laughs> okay, so this one, is probably also going to be a floral, but I'm thinking uh, this is one of my favorite stencils. Um, I have a couple that I use all the time. This is also a favorite, and they're just nice to use for an overall feeling. Uh, I'm not, I don't want it to say anything. I can even do it backwards. I can do it going any either which way. But I think I'm gonna go this way, and what I would like to use is, uh, I'm going to make it a relief stencil, and I'm gonna add some, again, Home Depot, my favorite art <laughs> store, and I'm using a joint compound, and let me... Which substitutes for the more expensive yeah. molding paste. Yes, and the thing I like about this, too, um, is it's sandable. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's really cheap and it works really great. <laughs> all of those things, all of those things are great. So what I want to do is I'm going to create just some interest going off both sides of my canvas. And, um, I just trowel it right on there. I don't really care if it, if every letter's perfect, some of them won't be, and that's just gonna add to the, the piece, add to the mystique of what the heck is going on here. I hold it and I can pick that up. There's some, oh, I'm gonna put it over here on this side. Let me take it from you. Oh. In a minute, I will. Now I'm gonna put some more here. I can pretty much scrape what's on top of this stencil and get a pattern going on here. I don't want it to be really strong, just kind of subtle over on this side because I have a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Now what's nice about this, it's a relief. So when it does come to painting and I paint over that, it, it's going to, to show texture. And then if I go over and do a wash over it, it will show even more texture. So now I got a nice kind of pattern going across without it being, um, you know, a full on solid stencil that says something. It doesn't need to say anything. It's just texture that I want to add. So, um, and while I have this here, I, for the heck of it, will find my vase. And maybe this is another little vase. I have to be careful not to go into that. T typically, I would wait until everything dries before I do this, but for the sake of videos, it's uh, good to be ready to dive right in. So here's, here's my pot. This is probably gonna be a natural table, top, table horizon, and this will be another one, even though they're askew. And um, I think that will be it. This is obviously gonna be a flower. This will be a flower. Once I've got things painted in, I may just leave that as a flower and just add some drawing around it to indicate more of a floral. I don't think I have to spell everything out. Here's a perfect little line for this. And maybe I want that line to continue over here. So again, I've got my, you know, I do like a line, I don't know why. It keeps me organized, I guess, in all of this commotion. Mm -hmm. So that is my process to get started on a painting. Oh, Denise, thank you so much. This has been the most fantastic video. Well, thank you. Our, our first time here for the North Coastal Art Gallery. And um, we thank you so much for coming to visit us. So come again, will you? I will. I know there's so will. much more you'll be available to teach us with. And love this tip about using the old towel here to wipe your brushes off. Keep it clean. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.